I'm doing this video wearing my cosplay makeup, so that's why I've got my my eyes like this. Um, I didn't want to just like do a whole different makeup thing. I made some cosplay videos on my TikTok. I might I might post a link if anybody's interested, but like if not, whatever has nothing to do with what I'm doing here. But we are getting into part three, which is labeled the last period of contentment because of course like fucking dramatic and extra. I already hate it. Let's go. So Elliot Roger is starting fifth grade or like it's the summer before fifth grade and he wants to be a cool kid really bad and his family moves into this new house. His dad moves into this new house with in this prestigious area of the neighborhood which like I hate that. Um, and he is like really pissed off because he wants the room that has its own balcony and bathroom and they're not going to give him that room. They're going to give that room to Georgia because it's closer to the master bedroom. And he is really pissed off because he's Elliot Roger and he wants everything. Oh, but he gets the room. So it's fine. Everything's fine. And this is the house where like Elliot Roger's dad ends up staying and like continues to live in that house until Elliot Roger's death. And, like, it's so stressful to me to, like, think about it. Like, having your house mentioned in somebody's murder manifesto. Like, uh, I bet they moved. Like, I would have, I can't imagine staying there. And he talks about how his dad makes him go to a summer camp. He doesn't want to go to summer camp. And he's, like, talking about how, like, I liked going to my dad's for a while because he had this exquisite new house. But I got my way more often at mom's and that's how I wanted to live. He literally says, I got my way more often and that's how I wanted to live. Which is such a shitty little thing to say. Like, it's understandable when you're like in the mindset of a kid. But he's writing this as an adult. Like, and maybe it is, like you do need control of your, like, I, I don't know. He misspells the word humongous, which is just something I wanted to mention. He talks about this moment where like he's at his dad's and his dad has some friend over who is not named presumably because Elliot does not remember his name but he's like a friend of the dad and he's like oh you just turned 10 like you have such a great life ahead of you you're gonna have such a good time and he's like talking about how like oh yeah that dad that guy was saying how I'm gonna like Dave girls and fuck and stuff and it's like man you can do other enjoyable things like lots of people don't have romantic partners and still live happy fulfilling lives you know like I have a boyfriend now but I have not always and you know even in times that I was single you know my senior year of high school I was single I was very happy with being single he goes on to talk more about the difference between his parents and he talks okay I'm going to like give you some direct quotes because I could not say it better um mother always got me what I wanted right when I wanted it at mother's house all my needs were met with excellent precision whereas at father's house there would always be a time delay and it's like your parents are not your servants your parents are human people stop it and also these are not needs he calls them needs these are not needs that he's talking about he's talking about i don't have cool fashionable clothes like not all my wardrobe is not up to trend and it's like no if they weren't feeding you in a timely manner or something like that would be a problem but like i my family could not afford the like clothes that i wanted to wear and guess what like i was fine so he talks about him and his friend James and they're going to skate park and like skating together and he's like yeah I don't really like James seemed to be into skateboarding I don't know how into it he was um and here's a direct quote I was always better at it than him though and I liked it that way which like oof like I under I I get it like I was a dancer growing up I was a dancer up until like last year um of this past year and um I compared myself to my friends the whole time like I made friends with other people 
who were in my dance troupe and it's like you're always looking at the other people and comparing yourself but also like I was being compared to other people like by my coaches and by my choreographers and whoever and it was kind of unavoidable but if you're just doing something for fun I don't know it feels different so he talks about how he would hang out with jams and like his mom would take him skateboarding and stuff and he calls it the time of his life which like wow like if that was the time of your life I don't understand like nothing you did in your whole life was better than like skateboarding I don't get it especially like skateboarding when you were 10 years old like I don't look back at when I was 10 years old let me think I was in fifth grade when I was 10 I was not having the time of my life I was miserable 10 years old man your life should get better after that it should like I once dated this girl who would always talk to me about how like she had this amazing time in elementary school and it was like the best time of her existence and it's like what have you been doing since then like I I do not understand it we learned that Elliot Roger hates dogs which like surprise of course you're a terrible person of course you hate dogs so Elliot would like hang out with his friends whenever he was with his mom but whenever he was at his father's house he like would refuse to have his friends over like would not do it because of the time that Sumaya embarrassed him in like the previous section in front of his friends and because of this his dad and Sumaya are, are like concerned that he doesn't have any friends because he's never like bringing other kids over and it's like why didn't you ask him about it you know like I don't I feel like there's a missing communication there oh here's a thing that he says he says the coolest kids are mean and aggressive by nature that's bad that's bad that you think those people are cool if they're mean and aggressive by nature like that's not how you make friends that's not how you like become popular and I used to think that because you know you I was obsessed with the movie Mean Girls when I was younger and I was like okay I just have to be a mean girl no nobody's gonna like you like stop it he like keeps dropping people's first and last names and it's like stop it nobody wants to be part of your murder manifesto like stop like imagine you were in the same class as somebody in like the fifth grade and your name ends up, your full fucking name ends up in their murder manifesto. Like, Jesus, leave me out of it. So he talks about how he's, like, going on a fifth grade graduation trip, which is, like, how bougie is that? Um, and their whole class is, like, going on a camping trip. And he gets placed in a group that is in a tent. And he is too good to be in a tent. So he goes up to his teacher and he's like, no, I want to be in a cabin. And she moves him to a group in a, in a cabin. And she's like, yeah, it was me and a bunch of cool skater kids. And I was really proud to be in that group. And it's like, you weren't in that group. Like, you were in a different group. And you, like, bullied your way into this one. And he talks about his fifth grade graduation. And he's like, I'm, I was glad that they didn't make, make us give speeches because like, I couldn't have handled giving a speech. And it's like, it's, it's graduation. Like it's your fifth grade graduation. Why would they ask you to give a speech? And also he talks about how they play the song Time of Your Life by Green Day as like the graduation song. And he's like, I have such good memories associated with that song. And every time I hear it, I think about that glorious day and I'm like it's your fifth grade graduation maybe I'm being a bully maybe I'm being a bully I don't know at this point Elliot Roger gives up skateboarding because he sees kids that are younger than him and can do tricks that he can't do so he's like well I'm never gonna be a professional skateboarder and it's like dude you're 10 like you can be whatever you want like just practice but he doesn't have the motivation to practice anything he gets discouraged and he immediately quits so Elliot Rogers starts sixth grade he goes to middle school and he realizes that girls don't like him girls like popular boys and this is where we start getting into the insult ship finally um so I'm going to read you a direct quote that I hate I hate it I hate it so much all right 
Everything my father taught me was proven wrong. He raised me to be a polite, kind gentleman. Did he? Because you seem like a spoiled fucking brat. You've never really seemed polite or kind to me at all. In a decent world, that would be ideal. But the polite, kind gentleman, who you know, doesn't win in the real world. And he talks about mm, the alpha male is the one who wins. And like, you are not a gentleman. You're not nice to people. Like you demand your way. And if you don't get it, you scream and cry. That's not a gentleman. He goes to his first school dance and some like older seventh and eighth grade girls teach him how to slow dance and direct quote, that would be the only time in my life where I would have a satisfying experience with girls. The only time and the only is in italics. So Elliot Rogers' dad gives like more custody to his mom, but also like cuts off a significant chunk of the child support, which is, that doesn't really make any sense. Like she's paying to feed the kids more often. She's probably paying more for their clothes. Like, why are you paying less and seeing your kids less? At this point, um, his best friend's mom dies and he seems like super sympathetic. Like he seems to have the empathy to understand why this is awful and like what's going on with James, which makes me wonder like, what, what about the families of the people who you're gonna murder? What about your family? Like, don't you feel bad? His mom at one point invites a kid to like come over to her house to like play with Elliot or whatever. And the kid ends up like seeing where the mom lives and like making fun of Elliot because he lives in a poor house, which like, how shitty, how incredibly shitty. And he talks about how like, well, my dad lives in a really prestigious house. And it's like, houses are not prestigious. Like I, the word prestigious here is really weird to me because in my experience, prestigious is like, you know, you get into a prestigious college which means it's really hard and you have to like do academic stuff to get in. But like the house you live in as an 11 year old, like you didn't earn that shit. Your parents made that money and paid for that house, you know? Okay, so Elliot finishes the sixth grade. He goes to a summer camp. I'm gonna tell you a direct quote here. At this camp, an incident happened that would scar me for life. You wanna know what it is? You wanna take a guess? I'll, I'll give you a minute. Just go ahead. Guess what happened. You wanna know? A girl pushed him. A girl pushed him and he was scarred for life. It was the first time he was ever mistreated by a girl. Boo who? And he makes a big deal out of this. He says that he was deeply traumatized and that it ruined a part of his life forever. Being pushed by a girl in the sixth grade. So Elliot starts seventh grade and there's this guy who's starting sixth grade at his school who he of course mentions by first and last name. I won't be saying this kid's name, but I will tell you what he says about this kid. He was very ugly. And it annoyed me that he carried himself around as if he wasn't a freckled, chubby-faced imbecile. So, if you're an incel, because you're not tall enough, or you're not attractive enough, or you're like overweight or something, and you think that's why girls don't like you, guess what? Elliot Roger doesn't like you either, so like maybe find a new ideology. Oh, he's also racist, by the way. Like if you know someone who is of a race that is not white, he will bring that up and he will say that that's a reason that they shouldn't be liked. So fuck that guy. When he's 12, he finds out that his dad and stepmom are having a kid and he seems pretty happy about it, which like, cool, that's good. It's a life experience that's important. So their mom, according to Elliot, lives in like a poor house and doesn't get that much child support from his dad, but she also takes them on a vacation to Singapore. And he's talking about how it was like, 
they weren't flying first class, but it was still fun. And it's like, how, like, is your mom, does she have money or does she not have, like, I don't know. It's weird to me. Even his mom probably has more money than I ever did, so. Elliot talks a lot about Sumaya, but he doesn't give a lot of details as to like what exactly his problem with Sumaya is like he just talks it's just essentially like we argued a lot and that's as much detail as he gives us which was weird because he goes so much into detail about basically everything else except for this one very important detail and like I growing up was abused by a step parent and I was like a kid and didn't realize what was going on and I probably would have written it a lot like this, like, oh, we just didn't get along. And he talks about, like, traveling with his mom and, like, oh, it was so much less stressful than traveling with dad and Sumaya. And it just makes me wonder. So he talks about how he knows this kid who, like, was in his neighborhood. Now he's transferred to his school. And the kid is more popular than him. And he thinks that that's, like, unfair because the kid is black. And he's like, so I'm not black, so I should be more popular than him, which is wildly racist. And then right after saying this, he says, I wanted to live in a world of fairness. And I tried not to accept that it would soon come to an end. Like, you think being less popular just because you're black is fair? What? So he like, one day he's walking to Planet Cyber. He's 13 at this point. And Planet Cyber is like an internet cafe. And he sees this guy looking up porn on the computer. And he like, this makes him go into this whole thing about sex. And I'll um, give you a direct quote. Sex, dot, dot, dot. The very word, which by the way, he didn't capitalize the next sentence. You have to stop it. The very word fills me with hate. Not getting sex is what will shape the very foundation of my miserable youth. Youth? You don't need sex in your youth. You're 13. Stop it. Stop it. Okay, so it seems like his mother is having financial problems because she moves into a two-bedroom apartment and she's sharing a bedroom with the sister and Elliot gets his own room. And like... Yeah, it seems like she's having an issue. And Elliot is, like, making a whole big deal about it. Like, we're poor now. And it's like, your dad is fucking loaded. Maybe he should be paying his child support. So, um, his mom gets high-speed internet. He gets Halo 2. And that's the end of his social life. That's a direct quote. That was the end of this. That was the end of my social life. And that's the end of part three. Goodbye.